here's the time waveform that I got. It looks as expected, a square wave that is on for 20 time steps, and the number of total time steps is 50. So notice the x-axis here is time steps, whereas previously we plotted versus spatial indices, i. Here is the magnitude of the spectrum for the square pulse shown on the previous slide. First, is this even correct? Luckily, we can analytically calculate the spectrum of a square pulse and compare our result with the analytical answer. Before we do that, you can see that there is a maximum value of 1, so we've correctly normalized the waveform. Here is a square pulse in time. And then the second plot here is the analytical spectrum for a square pulse. So this is versus frequency. We can see that the first null here in the spectrum occurs at F0. And F0 is equal to 1 over T0, or T0 is the width of the square pulse in seconds. So in our case, T0 is equal to 20 but we have to multiply that times dt in order to get seconds. So if we plug in the dt value that we're using in our DFT calculation, and then also use it to calculate f0, we're going to get uh, f0 is equal to 3.5 gigahertz. This is much higher than the frequency range over which we're plotting. Since we're only plotting from 820 megahertz to 980 megahertz, the first null is beyond the right side of our plot, and that's why we just saw a steady decay of the magnitude as the frequency increases, because we're just plotting somewhere in here. If we were to rerun the DFT code and just lower f start to, say, 1 megahertz, and f end increase it to 5 megahertz so we can see more of the spectrum, we would be able to see the first null. Here is the result for the same DFT code, but with the spectrum plotted from 1 megahertz to 5 gigahertz. I know it looks like it's plotted all the way down to 0 hertz, but it just looks that way on this scale. And indeed, we can see that there is a null at 3.5 gigahertz as expected. So yes, if you obtained the result we got earlier when we plotted the DFT results only over the frequency range of 820 to 8, 980 megahertz, then your code is working correctly. So now we can reuse this DFT code on any time waveform that we want, and we can choose whatever frequency range we're interested in. The important thing to remember is that the DT in your DFT code must match the DT in the Maxwell's equations code. If you did not get the same result as what's shown on slides 16 and 17, then try to debug your code first before going on.